Hi, it's Jordantine One, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this really adorable little Lumagroomy Dachshund. So here they are. I made them sit up and do what my brother calls a prairie dog. I have a little doggy nephew that is a dachshund. His name is Milo, and when he sits up and begs, he does his little prairie dog. So. I'm just totally in love with this. I had created this for my little niece, Olivia. She's going to be two in August, and she's just absolutely in love with dogs, and she loves her little Milo. So she was just thrilled with this, and I hope that everybody else is too. To make your dachshund, you're going to need some kind of a hook, and I'm using the Rainbow Loom Metal Hook but you can use a crochet hook or whatever you have available. You'll need something to stuff it with, so I have polyfill. I'm going to use a twist tie to help get my magic ring started, but that's optional. You're going to need several C-clips and then something to use for the eyes. Now I'm using these glass beads. I'll show you the tube here. They're called 2 slash O glass e-beads that I got at my local craft store. But if you don't have beads, you could use buttons or you could use rubber bands. And then as far as your band count goes, you're going to need approximately 630 of the black and then 98 of a brown or tan color. These are rainbow loom bands and I believe the color that I'm using is called caramel. It doesn't actually have the name on. This is an older bag, but I'm pretty sure that that's the name of that color. The first thing that we're going to make are the dachshund's legs, and so we have a total of five rubber bands. I'm going to be making a magic ring of four to start, and I will be using a twist tie just because I think it's a little bit easier to get the magic ring started and then you'll need a clip or a stitch marker. So I'm going to take my twist tie and put it alongside of my hook and this is optional so if you don't have one you would just use your plain hook and I'm going to triple this first band so it just goes on, twist, back on, twist and back on again so you have the three loops and then I'm going to pull this up bend it in half and that's just going to help to keep those three loops together. If you don't have this you'll just have to use your fingers to pinch those three loops and then I'm going to take my first band get it on my hook it's going to come through those three loops back on and then one end will pull through the other and then from front to back I'm going back through those three loops pull through my second band get it back on so I have the three loops and one pulls through the other two and I'm just going to continue to pull these through one at a time back on so the three loops and one goes through the others and then I have one more here pull through back on and slide through so now I can remove this twist tie and then I'm going to take my clip or whatever you're using for a stitch marker I'm going to attach it to the one that's around my hook and then you just want to take a second and kind of spread these out. So they do kind of tend to be on one side here. And since we only have a magic ring of four, they're going to have to stretch a little bit farther around. In row two, we'll be using six rubber bands and we're following the pattern of two, one, two, one in the stitches. So here's our magic ring. I'm going to go over to the left to my stitch. And what a stitch is, is this little sideways V. It has two loops. And from front to back, I'm just going to push through. Make sure you're going under both of those loops. And I'm going to do two single crochet into this first stitch. So you're always just pulling it through back on and then one through the other two. That's one. And then back through that same stitch for a second. And then I'll move over to the next one. Now this one we're just doing one single crochet. 
and then in that next stitch here we're going to do twos so that's one and then back through for the second and then you should have one band left and that's going to go under this last stitch and that should always be where your clip marker is and then I'm going to move my clip and put it on the band that my hook is on In row three, you need six bands, and we're doing just one single crochet in each one of the stitches. And just be careful that when you're looking here at your stitches, it may look like you need to go into this one here, because we have a small magic ring we started with, so the bands are kind of stretched. But if you look off to the side here, you can see that we actually did go through this stitch. So it's this next one over here that's our next stitch to the left and you're just doing one in each and so you should have a total of six stitches here so that was one and this is two three four five and then that last one here is where your clip is for six And then again, you just want to always move your clip or whatever you're using. In rows four, five, and six, we're switching to that black color. And I have six rubber bands in each of the piles. And it's just going to be the same row like we just did with one single crochet in each. So I'll do the first one with you and I'll let you do the other two on your own. The only thing that's going to be a little different is we're going to have to do a slip stitch since we're changing colors. So again, I'm moving over to this next stitch. And this is kind of small, and if you feel like you're not sure where you need to go because it seems to be closing in, just take a second and sort of stretch this out and it opens up the stitches so you can see it a little bit better. So since we're changing color here, we're going through our stitch, but then we're also going through the one on our hook. Then you're getting the other end back on, so this time you have just two loops, and one will pull through the other. And then it's just regular from that point on. So that was our first one. So then here's two. Three. Four. Five, and then one more where the clip is makes six. I'll just move my clip. So I am going to let you go ahead and do the other two rows on your own, but I just want to show you the beginning of this next row because we did make a slip stitch. So you can see here between where the brown and the black is where we did our slip stitch. So what really happens there is it creates sort of like a false stitch that you may think you need to go through. So it looks like a little half brown stitch and then a little half black stitch. So this little black stitch is not the one you want to go through. It's actually the next one. Let me spread it out here for you. So it actually really looks like it's a second black stitch that you need to go under. And that's going to start your first band to go under that. And then you would just continue around with the other five. So you can just pause your video here and complete those two rows. So I've now completed my first leg here. And what you're going to do is just repeat this three more times. So I will add the time to go back to in the tutorial if you feel like you need to Follow along with the steps again. Once you've completed your four little legs, you just want to set them to the side and then we're going to start on the main body. So the body is going to begin with the nose section. So I have five black rubber bands. We're going to do a magic ring of four, the same way we started all of the legs. So again, I'm using this twisty tie and this is 
optional here. So you're going to triple your first band. And then you should have four left that you're going to pull through one at a time. So there's one. Two. Three. And four. Now I can remove this and add my clip. And again, you want to just stretch these around, try and get them a little bit more evenly spaced. For row two, I'm switching to brown and I have eight rubber bands. I have them laid out in piles of two because we'll do two single crochet into each of the four stitches. So again, this stitch is pretty far spread out since it's a small magic ring. So you're gonna just have to stretch over a little ways. And again, I'm always working from front to back. So I'm going to do two, and I will have to do that slip stitch since I'm changing colors. So go through all. So that's one, back through for a second. and then just keep repeating that two in each so one and two and again it's pretty small so you might have to stretch it out a little bit just to see where your stitches are And then in this last one where my clip is, I have two left. Rows three and four are still going to stay brown and there's eight in each of these piles. So you're doing just one single crochet into each of the stitches. So I'll let you just pause your video and do that on your own. But again, let me just show you really quick here how we did that slip stitch. So you'll see the black little half stitch and then this first brown that's a little bit of a half stitch. You're ignoring that and it's this next one that you're going in to pull your first band through. So then just continue around for the rest of this row and then do that next row as well. In row five, we're switching to the black bands and you're going to need 11. And the pattern is two single crochet for the first three stitches and then one single in the rest. So again, we're gonna do a color switch here. So I'm going to my next stitch over and I'm going to pull through all on my hook and then under that same stitch for my second and the reason that I'm doing two in each for the first three is this is going to be the face and we want it to spread out and then I'm doing just one in the rest because I want it to be flatter like under the chin so here's my second stitch with two and I have one more here So be the top of his little snout and then the remainder has just one in each this is my last one here under the clip In row six, we're still doing some increases, but they're spread out a little bit more. We're starting with two, one, two, one, two, and then the remainder are going to be singles. Because we want this top of the snout to still be spreading out, 
So we're dealing with this slip stitch here, so just ignore the little half brown and black and you're going into this next one, that's the true stitch. We're going to be doing two into this, so one and then back through the same for a second. And then a single. And two for the next one here. Single for the next. And then in this next one is our last increase for this row. And then for the remainder here, it's just going to be one into each. And you'll definitely notice when you're done this row how it's spread out on the one side, which is what we want to happen. Have two more here. And I'll move my clip, whoops. So you can see here how it's starting to look. It's taking shape. In row seven, you'll need 17 bands. And you can see we still are doing just a little bit of increasing. So the pattern is two, one, one, two, one, one, two, and then the rest are singles. Now, if you want to add your eyes during the looming process when you're making the rows, I would suggest doing it now. And you probably want to put them somewhere around the third and the seventh band. So for this one, I'm going to add my eyes separately just because my beads that I'm using are not complete circles. And I like the look of them when they are vertical more than horizontal. So I'm going to add them later. So again, it's just across the top here that we're wanting this to spread out. So I'm going to my next stitch over here, starting out with two. And then the next two stitches just have one single band. And then an increase. And two singles. And then one more increase here as we're coming over a little bit more to the side of the head. And then you just want to work your way around with one in each till you get back to where your marker is. I feel like I'm squeezing his little snout. And if it's a little bit misshapen, don't worry about it because once you add that stuffing, it will fill out and look perfect. So I have two left here, whoops, just lost that off my hook. That happens occasionally, probably more often than I'd like to admit actually. <laughs> and so now you can see here how it's forming. For row eight, you're going to need 17 bands, and I have four brown, and then the rest are black. And I just laid out the first few because I just wanted to show you where I put the brown. I have them in stitches one and two, and then five and six, because the black and brown dachshunds usually have the little brown sections over their eyes. So again, it's just one in each here. 
but since we are changing color, we're going to be dealing with some slip stitches. So this very first one will be a slip stitch. And then over to the next stitch, again this is brown. And then in the next stitch we're starting black, but you're going to have to do that slip stitch, so go through all. And then another black. And then in the next one, again, another slip stitch, so again you're going through all the black. And now here's another brown, just regular. And now for the remainder of the row, it's all black. Again, you're doing that slip stitch. It's really not critical if you don't do the slip stitch. The only thing that's going to do is the color band that you are changing to is going to go into the next color. So it just sort of makes it look a little bit nicer when you do a slip stitch, but if you're having trouble with it or you forget, it's it's not really a huge deal. In row 9, you're going to again be doing 17 bands, one in each, but I have the two brown. I have it in stitch 1 and stitch 5. And so you're going to have to start out with a slip stitch. And the last row had a bunch of slip stitches, so this is where it can get a little bit confusing. If you look closely, the slip stitches as I said earlier, look like a little bit of a half stitch, but they also look like they're sort of going up where the regular stitches that we want are more um, horizontal or sideways. So we're ignoring this first little brown and you're going to this next one and this is going to be a brown and it's going to have to pull through all to do your slip stitch. And then the next one you're going under is brown and it's a black one that's going to pull through. Again you're going to go through all since you're changing color Sorry, I know this can be a little confusing. And then this next one here, this little black is like a little half. That is not the true stitch. You're going to that next one over. And since we're still keeping with black, you don't have to worry about changing colors, at least not yet. Black in the next. Again, you'll see that on the previous row we had changed colors here so the first one is a false stitch you want to go to this next one over and now you're going to pull through a brown through everything and now you're just going to do one black in each for the rest of the row whoops I almost forgot there myself to do a slip stitch since I'm changing the color and then once again, you'll see here is where a color change happened. So this little part isn't right. You're going to that next one. And then for the rest of the row here, it should be pretty smooth sailing. Nothing out of the ordinary, just one in each. And if you find that you are really struggling with that, you can just keep that all one color if you wanted to just leave it all black I'm sure it wouldn't be a big deal that you didn't have the little brown spots over the eyes I know when I first started doing this that confused me so much about doing the slip stitches it was easy enough to do a slip stitch but then it's confusing on what's an actual stitch because I would be gaining stitches and not understanding why So hopefully when I 
do this, I explain it well enough that you guys can grasp it and I'm not too repetitive. So here's my last one for this row. Now before I go any further, I'm going to attach my eyes. And you may have already done this after row six, but as I said earlier, I didn't want my eyes to turn out this way. I wanted them to be more this way because I think it just looked cuter on the dog. So I'm going to do that now. So I want to see on the face where I want the eyes to be attached. And I think I want them somewhere around here and over here. So I'm going to take my hook from the back and push through. I'll just grab my first band and I put my bead on here with a twist tie. I'm going to pull that to the back, leave it on my hook, and then just go over to the left here. And I usually like to skip a hole here and go to the next one over just so it's stretched out a little bit more over that space otherwise the eyes tend to pop out a little bit more they stick out further because the bands are looser I'm going to take an additional band and just pull through and make a really nice and tight slip knot so it doesn't come apart over time and it'll be a loop inside but you won't see it so it doesn't really matter and then again I'm going to go a little bit over here to the right and I'm going to say maybe somewhere around, around here I want the eye so I'll come up to the right pull one into the back and then go over to the left here pull the other end through to the back see if I like how that looks and then I'm just going to make another slip knot on here Pull this other band through both, and then one end will pull through the other. Pull that nice and tight. And you have a little bit of room to do some adjustment to the eyes if you think they need to be spread out or pushed together. In row 10, you need 17 bands. It's one single crochet in each, and this time it's all black. So I am going to do this row with you just because we have those slip stitches that you're going in. So let me just get this back on my hook. And you can see the first one we're starting out with is where a slip stitch was. So you're ignoring the first one, going to that next brown. So that's one. And then the very next one, you're ignoring that first black half, going to the next one. So that's two, and then we're just working our way over. I am going to count these out just because with all the slip stitches and everything, I don't want to lose my count here. So that was three, and then the next one is four. And now we're up to another slip stitch, so ignore this first one. Go into that next brown, so that's five. And then again, we changed color on this previous row. So that's another slip stitch, the black. So ignore that and go to the next one, which makes six. And then the rest should be a piece of cake. I'm still going to count them out. Hopefully our count works out. Then we know we got them all right. So that was seven. eight, nine, and ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, Fourteen, fifteen, 
16 and then the 17th one is where your clip is so that worked out fine In row 11, we're going to start to do some decreases to make the head get smaller and go towards the neck. So you're going to need 14 rubber bands, and every place that I have a C-clip is a band that's going to be a decrease, and that's just putting two stitches together to lessen the count. So the pattern is a decrease and two singles, decrease two singles, and then five more singles, and then another decrease and two singles. So let me just show you how to do a decrease. You're going to this next stitch over, and so far we've been going under from the inside out under both loops, but this time we're going to go from the middle and out. We're just going to go through that outer loop, pull back towards yourself, and then again from the middle of that V, push just through that back loop. Then you're going to take your rubber band, and it's going to pull through both of these. Sometimes it's a little bit harder to get through that second loop. You might have to use your fingers. Get it back on your hook and then one will pull through the other two. So that's just brought those two stitches now together. And then in the next two we're doing a single crochet in each. So that's one and then one in the next one here. And now we're to a decrease. So the next one, again, you're just doing that outer loop, pull back and go through that next outer loop, pull through both of those, and now we're doing two single crochet, one in each of the next two stitches, and then five more single crochet. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. And then the next two go together. And then I have two bands left. I should have two stitches, and I do. So there's one and two. Just get my clip here. In row 12, we're doing some more decreasing. So you only need 11 bands, and we're decreasing the first two stitches, go together, then one, decrease, one, two, three, four, five, six singles, a decrease, and one. So my first two are together. If I can get this band to split apart, there we go. So there's my first decrease, and then a single. So this is going to narrow it down for our neck area here. And then the next two together. And now I have six single crochets, so I'll count those out. One. This is along the bottom of the head here, so we want it pretty flat. This is two, whoops, just lost it. Grab that again here. Two. Three. Four. five, six, and then the next two are together. We're coming up along the side of the head, 
and then one more at the end here. And I'll move my clip. So that's the skinniest part here for the neck. And now before I go any further, I'm going to add a little bit of stuffing into the face here. So I have some polyfill. I have it broken into a couple smaller little pieces here. And I want to push it forward so I can get this little nose section or the little snout filled in. And you want to fill it pretty full but not so full that it makes the bands stretch apart so the stuffing sticks out. So I like to do it in a little bit of smaller sections. And I'm not going to fill it all the way to the edge because I don't want to be fighting all of this fluff when I'm trying to add the next rows. I just wanted to get the front filled in before I keep going here with the rest of the body. In row 13, you'll need 15 rubber bands, and we are going to start to do some more increasing for the body. So I have three singles, and then the next four stitches get two in each, and then the last four stitches are singles once again. So I'm just moving over to my next one, and again, you're going to have to push down and sort of fight this fluff once you add it in there. So I'll do the first three singles, so that's one, two, three, and now we're going to start two in each for the next four stitches. So the reason that we're doing this is to get that belly or the underside of the dog to be more rounded. So that was two in that one. Now I have two in the next. So up until this point when we were doing our increases we were trying to keep them at the top because we wanted the head to rise up while we wanted the chin or underneath there at the neck to stay more flat. So now I have two in this next one here. And then for this part, as I said, we want the belly to grow down while we want the back to stay mostly flat. So it's just a little bit of playing around with where we're putting the increases. So I'm doing two in this stitch right now. That's my last increase for this row. And then I have four singles coming up around. So that's one, two, Oops, lost that one there. Let's do this again. Three and four. Going to move that clip. In row 14, we're doing some more increases. So you need a total of 18 bands. And you can see we're doing five single crochet and then we're doing the next three stitches with two in each and then the last seven are going to be singles. So again we're just wanting that increase to be along the bottom here. So we have one, two, three, Four, and one more single here. And as my dachshund head grows here, I might be messing up some of the bands here, the order. Um, I'll try to keep it straight, but the next two, actually the next three stitches have two in each. So here's one, and a second one. 
And then in that next stitch, I have two. And then in this next stitch, again, there's two. And let me just move these out of the way here because we know for the rest of the way till we get to the clip, it's just going to be one in each. So there should be seven stitches. So that was four. I should have three left, and I do. It's five. Six. And then one more. So you definitely see that it's much more stretched out at the bottom. Kind of reminds me of like a head mounted on a wall, the way that it looks. Kind of gruesome for a dog, actually. In row 15, you'll need 18 rubber bands, and I am going to add the legs here. So, in my original one I created, I put brown in this row just because if you look at a dachshund, a lot of times they have a brown chest. But for this one, I'm only going to show it in black, only because if I add the brown, it's going to create the slip stitches and it's a little bit more confusing. And then with adding the legs on top of it, I'm afraid it might just be a little bit too hard. But if you are an advanced loomer, you can definitely do that. I'll show you. Here's my little guy that I added the brown to. And I did that on stitches 5, 6, 7, and 8 in this row if you want to follow that. Just be careful about all of the slip stitches. So let me just get this back on my hook here. I'm going to start out doing four single crochet, so one in each of the stitches. So there's one, two, three, and four. And now here's where we're going to start to add the legs. So each one of the legs has a stitch count of six. And we're going to do three for this row, and then we'll add the other three for the next row. So the first thing I'm going to do is go under that fifth stitch with my hook. And I'm going to take a leg, and where I have the clip where the loose band is, I'm going to get that on my hook, and then I can remove this clip. I'm going to go around over to the right here. Um, follow this around as if I'm going under the next stitch here on the leg. So I have three loops there from the leg, plus the stitch I just went under has two loops, and then there's one at the base. So I'm taking my rubber band. It's going to pull through the three bands on the leg. It's going to go under that stitch and then I'm going to get the other end back on so you have the three loops and one pulls through the other two. And then you want to turn your leg so that the opening and it might be closed off a little bit since it's not a very big stitch count you can stretch this apart you want that opening to be facing upward because we're attaching the bottom of the leg here. So I'm just going to go to that next stitch over on the body and then if you look at the leg here, I'm going underneath, it was this loose loop that we just attached, I'm going underneath of that because that's what would form the sixth stitch on the leg, so that's why you want to go under that. If you don't go under that one, you're going to lose a stitch. I'm going to take my next band, I'm going to pull through the two loops from the leg, the two loops on the body, and then again you have the three, one pulls through the other two. And then I'm going over to the next stitch on the body, and then that next stitch on the leg. I know this might be a little bit confusing, but I think it's so much easier to attach it this way than having to anchor it on after the body's finished. 
So again, you're pulling through the two stitches and then doing that single crochet. So now I'm going to my next stitch here and I'm done attaching this leg because I did the three stitches on there and then right away I'm going to start attaching the second leg. So again, I'm under this stitch. It's the eighth stitch in this row and I'm picking up this loose band from the leg and then again I'm following that around to the right so if you're not sure where you're at just look to the side you can see that that's where that band is we're going to that next stitch over and again you can spread this open if you need to it's a little bit hard to see it gets closed off and I'm gonna pull through the three loops on the leg the stitch on the body and then I'll go over to my next stitch that's going to be the ninth stitch and here I can take this clip off and that's where we're going to also go under here where that loose band initially was that we just attached you're going through that stitch there both loops pull through the two stitches and then one more time here the body stitch and the next leg stitch pull through and so if you look here what you should have is the two legs attached and then the open circles um, underneath there we're going to attach the other three in the next row and then I'm just finishing this off here with one in each um, just till I get back to the start. So as I said, I know that this might be kind of confusing. It's definitely not the easiest thing to do, but for all of my previous um, creations, except for the seal, I was attaching the pieces separately, and I was just finding that it was such a nightmare to try and do that. And I would spend so much time trying to get them even looking and then especially when I was trying to film myself doing it I was having to do it over and over until I got it positioned correctly so this way you know that it's going to be exactly where you need it to be it's going to be nice and symmetrical so I definitely love that method a lot more so let me just move my clip here you can see how he's looking I think it's so cute in row 16 we're going to attach the other side of the legs I have 18 rubber bands again it's one in each of the stitches and I should mention if you do want to put any stuffing in your legs you should do that now because once we do this row the legs are going to be closed off so I'm not going to bother to put any stuffing. I think that they hold up fairly well on their own. It's such a small area to have to stuff, but you can certainly do that. So let me just move my camera out just a little bit. Um, I feel like I'm sort of fighting to stay under the camera here. So I'm going to do the first three stitches, one in each. So there's one. two and three and now in this fourth stitch we're going under the body stitch and here's where we're going to pick up the next stitch from the leg so you kind of have to again open this up see where that last stitch is attached and you're going to go to that next stitch over so sometimes it's a little hard to tell I can see that We've already gone through this one, so it's this next one. There should be three open stitches. So again, you're just pulling through both of the stitches. It's four loops in total. You're going under. And then move over to the next one here. Going under the body. And then through that middle one here of the leg that doesn't have anything in it. And when you're pulling through, if you're finding that you're getting hung up, 
um, what I like to do is just pull down on the body and that sort of helps to open up the stitches and now here's my last one this is going to be the hardest one to see you're going under the body and then under the leg and again if you pull down it helps to keep those bands from getting too caught up on your hook okay so we have that one attached and now right away in this next stitch we're going to start the other leg here so just find the next stitch that's open and I just lost my band so let me go back under that try this again so here's one and now this is the middle of the leg Two, and then there should be one more opening here and that makes three so they should be all closed off and nice and tight on here now and then you'll just work your way around back to the start with one in each uh oh my band broke hmm so I have to backtrack here. So it looks like that very last one that I did connected the leg to is the one that broke. So let's do this again. Body and leg here. Sorry about that. So now let's keep going here. One in each. I'm going to be sure to band here, but I'll grab one at the end. So I find when I use the Rainbow Loom brand, that rarely happens. They're usually very good quality, but once in a while, you'll get one that breaks on you. Luckily, that was an easy fix. It's not something that broke back at the face that I have to start all over again. That would really stink. So I should have three left. I only actually have two because my one broke. But when I get to the end here, I'll grab another one. Oops. And then one more here. So hopefully everybody got through that okay and got their legs attached. Here we go. You can see them on there. In rows 17 through 26, you're going to need 18 bands for each of the 10 rows. So it's just going to be one single crochet in each of the stitches. So I am going to let you do that on your own since it's pretty straightforward. So you can pause your video here and do that now. The next thing that I'm going to do before I add more of the body is to stuff all of this long section that I just made. In row 27, you'll need 18 rubber bands, and we're going to attach the back set of legs. So we're going to be doing this the same way as we did the front set. So let me just get my hook back in here. So you can see where we've stopped. It's already gone past the where the first leg would get attached. So we're going to be attaching the left leg first here. So in stitch 1, that's where we're going to start. So I'm going through that first stitch and then with my leg here I'm picking up the loose band and I can take off that clip. If it wants to get off here. And then I'm going around to the right and going under that next stitch. So remember you have the three loops from the leg and then you have your there's three other loops on your hook, the stitch and then the one at the base. So I'm going through the 
three leg loops and then under that stitch back on and through the others and then I'm moving over to the next body stitch and then I'm going under the leg stitch. If you stretch this out and make sure your circle is at the top here, your opening, it's that loose loop that we just attached. That's the one you're going under. Pull under the two stitches. And then the next body and then the very next leg stitch and again under the two stitches and again pull down if you're having a hard time and your hooks getting caught up if you pull down it really helps a lot and it also helps if you don't lose it off your hook there okay so now we attached the three for that leg and we'll pick up the next three for that leg on the next row. So now I'm going to continue over here and I'll count so we know where to attach the second leg. So we did three, so this is four, five, and again you have to fight with that fluff. Six, seven, eight, nine, and here's ten, and now we're on to the eleventh here. Twelve, thirteen. Let me just turn it over here. Again, I'm going to just push this fluff in. So here's fourteen and fifteen, and then we should have three stitches left here. And that's where we're going to attach our other leg. So in the 16th stitch, I'm going under. And then I need to get this leg here. So I'm getting my loose loop. And then the next one over. Working our way around to the right here. Under those three, the next two. Take that clip out. And now the next body stitch. And let me just spread this open here a little bit more on the leg. It does definitely close up on you. So I need the loop that we just attached. And then there's one more here on the body. It's where your clip is. And it's that very next one on the leg. To make it under both of the loops of that stitch. And now I just need to move my marker here. In row 28, we're going to use 18 bands, and we are going to attach the other half of the legs here. So it's going to start in stitch one. So I'm just moving over to my next stitch on the body, and then the next stitch on the leg. And you're probably gonna have to pull this out a little bit to see which one you need to go through. And I'm just gonna pull through the stitches. 
and then the next one over on the body and the middle one here on the leg and then the next one on the body and you should have one left for the leg here I think that's the hardest one to see because the rest of the legs all attached at that point And then we're going to continue around here again. I'll count these out. So we did three. So it's four, five, six, seven. eight, nine, ten, Fourteen, and then in the next three is where we're going to attach the leg here so in the fifteenth one here it's going to find that next leg stitch here so that was fifteen and then on to the next one Sixteen, and then you should have one leg stitch left and there's actually two body stitches because we have to count up to 18 so this is the 17th and then you should have one left here where your clip is just a regular that's for the 18th stitch In row 29, it's just one single crochet in each stitch, so you have 18 bands. So you can pause your video and I'll let you do that on your own. The next thing I'll show you is how to make the tail. So we're going to start with a magic ring of four, and so you need five rubber bands. So again, I'm going to use my twist tie here, triple my band. And now I'm going to pull through my four. So when I first made the tail, I did it with just some bands that were looped together, like without making a magic ring, um, just sort of like a chain. And I wasn't real thrilled with it, so I decided to do a little bit of a thicker tail by making the magic ring. So let me just take this out, and again, you want to spread this around. Now to finish out the tail, you'll just do one single crochet in each of the stitches. So you'll need four for each of the rows. So I'm going to do four rows, but it really depends on how long or short you want your tail to be. So the only thing that I can say is since this is only four and we're not making it any bigger, the stitches are going to be kind of stretched apart to make that circle. So let me just do the first one with you. So you're having to stretch all the way around here to pick up your next stitch. So that's one. And again, they're going to be spread a little bit farther apart. Two. Over here is three, and then here's the fourth one where my clip is. 
So it's definitely a little bit harder to see since it's such a small circle. So it definitely helps to have the clip. So you can just continue making your tail as long as you'd like it to be. In row 30, we're going to start to do decreases to close up the back of the dog. So I have 12 rubber bands and we're doing a decrease in every other stitch here. And I am going to attach the tail when I get at the top section. So let me just zoom out here a little bit. So my first two are going together. And I'm just going through those outer loops again. And then a single. Next two together. And when I get up around the top, I'm going to add that tail. So the next one's single. And then the next two are going to be together. I think it probably is right around the spot where I want the tail to get attached. So let me just go under these two. See if that looks like it's the top there. Yeah, I think it does. So I'm going to also get my tail here, get this loose loop, and take out my clip. And then I'm going to also go under that next stitch over. Really anywhere. You can go straight across, just so it's attached by more than just that little end. And now I'm going to take my band here so there's going to be a lot of things I have to pull through. So let me get through the tail. I'm going to have to go through the two that I'm decreasing and pull through. Let's see. Yeah, I think that looks like it's pretty much in the middle. And then I have a single. Decrease. Kind of going out of order here with my bands, but still doing every other. I just jump down to the bottom row. Now a single. And a decrease. Single. and a decrease and then in that very last one a single Now again, I'm going to add some more fluff here in the back section before it gets too closed off. For row 31, you'll need six bands and you can see we're going to do decreases in every stitch here. So here we are towards the bottom, and again, just keep your fluff out of the way if you can. So I'm just decreasing for every stitch here. So that's my first one, and then the next two are going together. And just make sure I'm going through that outer stitch. Tail's kind of in the way. Sort of having to wrestle with that little tail there. And then the next two. The 
This one seems kind of tight, I think, because that's where the tail was attached. And the next two. And we have two left here. Just really trying to close this off. So we're almost getting to the end here. The only thing we'll have left to do after we get this closed off is to do the ears. So here's my last two. This clip is preventing me from going under there. I'm going to take out my clip here. Now the last thing we're going to do is just to finish closing this off here. It's pretty much closed right now. It does have a little bit of an opening, but we narrowed it quite a bit. So you'll just need a couple extra bands. And really, you'll just have to use your best judgment. Um, if you think it looks like there's any gaps or openings here, you can go through. So I think what I'm going to do before I do anything else is I see it looks like it's a little bit open right here. So I'm just going to reach my hook underneath to that open section here and pull this band under. So let me take my clip off. You can see a little bit better. And then the actual open section is like right around here. So let me just go under these couple stitches here and I'm going to take another band and pull through let me just go through all of them and I'll just tie this off pull that nice and tight and again if you see any openings like right here looks like a little bit of an opening what I would suggest is when you hide your loop to go under there so let me just go up under here. It's hard not to get this fluff in the way. And I'll just pull this under to sort of hide that section. So you can use as few or as many bands as you need until you think it looks pretty good. I see some fluff sticking out there. The last thing that we need to do is to make the ears and attach them. So I'm going to start with a magic ring of five. So you need six rubber bands. So I'm going to triple my first band here. And then I'm just going to pull through the five bands. I can keep my hook in there. So that's one, two, three, four, and here's my last one. I can take this out. For row two of the ears, you need 10 bands. We're doing two single crochet into each of the stitches. So you want to spread your circle out there. And then I'm going to this next one over. So we're making a complete circle to start. But then after that, you'll find that we go back and forth because we want the ear to be flat against the head. So it's a similar concept to the way I made my bunny ears for my Easter Bunny tutorial. You start with a magic ring and then you just work your way back and forth. So I have like a bigger circle here to start with because I want the bottom of the ear to be nice and rounded. So we have two here in our last. And 
and I don't even know if we really need this clip anymore, but I'll move it anyway. In row three, you're going to need five bands, and we're going to do a pattern of two, one, two, just into those first three stitches. So I'll go over to my next stitch here. This is where I'm doing an increase. And then one in the next, whoops, and then two into the next. So you can see now that's going to be where we're going to grow the ear at the top here. For row four, you need four bands, and you can see this is how we left off. We were at the end here. What you're going to do is take your ear and flip it over, so now your hook's going to be on the right side, and we're just going to work our way back here with the four bands. But since we flip this over, we can't be going in from front to back. We have to go back to front. So if you look from the top view here, you can see that this band is coming up through this end stitch. We're going to go back through that, back to front, pull through a band, back on your hook, and one goes through the other two, and you're just going to move over to that next stitch. Again, don't forget, back to front. It's our second one. three, and then one more. It's going to be one short of where your clip is there. And actually, you don't really even need that clip in there anymore. We can take that out. Row five of the ear has four bands, and again, we left over here on the left. You're going to flip this. So now your hook's on the right, and since we flipped, again, now we're going to have to reverse our direction. So we are going to be able to go in through from the front. And if you feel like your band's at all twisted, you can just move it around and get it untwisted. So we're going front to back this time. Again, you're going through the end one where your band is coming up through. And you're just going to work your way back over here. If you don't lose the bands off your hook like I just did. So that's one... two, three, and then this fourth one, you're actually having to go, it's a little bit more to the side. You're going to have to go through that. It's a little bit of a tighter fit, but you're going to have to go through that one. So that's our last one. In row six, you need four, and again, you're going to flip it. So your hook's now on the right, and once you change direction, you have to change the direction you're going through from the back now. So there's one. Two. Three. And again, that fourth one is a little bit off to the side here, and it's always going to be a little bit tighter to get through. But you need to do that or else you're going to be losing a stitch every row. In rows seven through nine, we're going to continue on with the same pattern. So you have four for each. And again, we had left off with our hook over here flipping, reverse the direction, so this time you're going through from the front to back. So I'll do this first one with you, and then you can finish out the other two. So there's one, two, three, and then this little one on the side. 
your fourth. And then again you would flip and this next row would go in from the back. So you can pause your video and do that now. And of course if you wanted longer ears you would just continue on making more than nine rows. Or if you wanted shorter ears you could stop before you get to the ninth. So here's my first completed ear. And what you're going to do is just go back and do a second one. So I'll add the time in the tutorial if you need to go back and follow along again. So pause your video and make your second ear now. Now the very last thing we need to do is to attach the ears. So I have just a couple of bands here. I think I have about eight in my pile. And it's a little bit of guesswork involved. You just have to see where you think the ears will look the best. So here's this little face. So I think where the brown is, just a little bit behind that. And you can see how far up you want them or how low you want them. So I think maybe right about here, right behind where the brown is. So I'm just going to get this on my hook the loose band and then I'm going to actually go through the next loop as well go through the top of the head here see what I think I think it looks pretty good and then I'm going to take a band pull through all of this that's on my hook Get the other end on and pull one through the other and then I'll just go to this next stitch behind and then again pick up a piece of the body pull through do that single crochet stitch and then I'll go through the next one and again tag it to the body so if when you're doing this at all you don't like the way it's looking it's easy just to back that out and change your placement so I think that looks pretty good so now what I'm just going to do is go through the body one more time here and take one last band and just make a nice tight slip knot so that's not going to come apart. And then what you're going to have to do is just hide this loop. So just come up through the neck here towards the bottom and just pull that down. So we have one ear attached there. Now I just have to do the second one. So I want it to be as symmetrical as I can get it there. I think that looks pretty good. So this time our loose loop is on the back here, but I do want to attach it from front to back. So I'll have to account for that loose loop at the end there. So I'm just going to go through the ear stitch and then I think I'll go through this one here on the head pull through both of those stitches pull one through the other and then I'll go to this next one here on the ear and then through the head and as I said, there's definitely some guesswork involved here. You can see what you think looks best for your little dog. And then one more here. I'm going to go through the loose band. And then also I'm going to go through the ear stitch. And then through the body. And then one more here, we're going to just go through 
a section of the body and do a nice tight slip knot so that's not going to come apart. And then again, I just have to hide this loose loop. See, I got some fluff to come out there. So then you can do your adjusting of your ears. So let me just pull this out. Here's his little face and his cute little floppy ears. I hope that everyone loves their new little Lumagurumi Dachshunds as much as I do. You can always leave me comments on YouTube and Facebook, post pictures of your creations to my Facebook page, and please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can stay up to date on my latest tutorials. You can also find me on Pinterest and Instagram, so please feel free to subscribe to those as well. Thanks for watching!